Breaking news, you heard it here first. Probably didn't hear here first, but the US is technically now officially in a recession, kinda, depending on who you ask. Uh, it's funny because based on the research that I did, I thought it was across the board, general consensus, no matter what, that if you have two negative consecutively, <laughs> two consecutively negative GDP quarters, um, then that technically constitute a recession. But apparently not, sorta got lost in translation, I guess. And so I'll pitch it back to you, early question, I know, but I want you guys to engage. Um, what do you think? Are we in a recession? Were we already in a recession? Are we not in a recession? What's your gauge? What's your thought on that? But the mortgage rates has responded by falling yet again another week to 5.3%, really reflecting the fears of a recession, whether you think we're in one right now or not. And so I kind of wanted to dive into the Orlando real estate market, give you guys sort of a mini market update just to show you guys where we are, where we're at, and where I think we're headed in the future. All right, so right now you're looking at the state of the Orlando real estate market report. And I wish we were filming this in August because then we'd have July numbers to compare to June, but now we have June to compare to May. So between June and May, we've seen a 41.2% increase in inventory, 5,431 homes we're on the market in June compared to 3,851 in May. So that is a huge spike relative to where we were before, not necessarily where we should be in terms of inventory wise, but again, the more the merrier, more in the favor of a buyer, less in the favor of a seller. Going down the list, new listings, of course, are gonna be increased as well, so it's 11%. New contracts were down 8.4% from 32.26 to 29.56, so there aren't as many people writing offers anymore as there were before easily chalk that up to interest rates. And I'm gonna show you how drastic of a difference even some of my clients and just everybody is facing due to these rising interest rates and what that has caused them to do as it relates to the home buying process. And so I'm gonna use this simple mortgage calculator to really show you the impact of interest rates on your monthly payment and how that's caused some buyers to drastically adjust their expectations in the house that they're looking for. And so let's use home price at 500,000. I think that's fair. And so let's go 500,000 here to make things even. Then we're gonna go 20% down um, for argument's sake. Looking back a year ago, interest rates around that time was around high two. So you're talking 2.8, 2.9, but we're gonna round it at three to make it simple. And so you were looking at a monthly payment of $2,378 for a house with these parameters. And so not bad at all. Now let's bring it up to today's rates and see how that compares. And so we're looking at we just told you 5.3, well, uh, we, I, I just told you 5.3 earlier in the video. That's when it dropped today, which is the 28th of July. And so maybe you don't have perfect credit, but we're going to assume you do. And so we're going to go to 5.3 from 2378. You're looking at 2913. That is a huge increase that could completely throw somebody's monthly budget off, which is what we've been seeing, especially in the new construction segment where they bought a year ago. They bought a year ago in those conditions with that interest rate, with that expectation to pay that much a month. Now fast forward to the present and they're now getting ready to close, but they can't because they can't afford this. They could afford a 3.25 or the three or the 2.8, but they can't afford the 5.3, the 5.75, the six. And so that's where we're starting to see cancellations, but what would it take for them to get that same payment at today's current interest rates? And so let's just kind of work our way down because I didn't do this beforehand. And so at 450, we're not quite there yet. We're just about 2,600. And so let's go down to maybe 425. Now we're at 2,400, so probably around 410 is where we'll end it off roughly around there. That's where you'll be able to get back that same payment. And this still applies even if you didn't buy new construction last year. Let's say you were just waiting on the sidelines last year. You knew interest rates were really low, but you just wanted to see prices come down and it didn't. I mean, objectively speaking, realtor aside, you really shot yourself in the foot. Historically low interest rates, that was a really big miss for a lot of people, but it was a great opportunity for some. But moving down the line to total pendings where they were also down 9%, almost 9% at 8.9% from 4645 to 4231. Again, buyer demand is slowing due to the many factors, but large in part due to interest rates. And so you're gonna see less homes going on a contract and less homes closing, which translates to close sales being down almost 4% from 3946 to 3793, 3793. And so 
That is where we're at. And let me actually bring you over to the MLS to do something else, which is if you look at these price decreases over the past seven days, and this is accounting for single family, condominiums, and townhouses in Orange Lake, Osceola, Seminole, and Polk County. So the five kind of counties that really make up Orlando. And so if you look over the past week, this is seven days, um, 1,460 price decreases, which is astronomical compared to where it was a year ago. You'd usually see this number between 150 guaranteed. It was always running. I remember vividly. It was always running on par with price increases, which right now is 285. 80% of that is going to be new construction because as they make more sales, they incrementally raise the price as well. So that is where we're at in price decreases. But if we pull you back to the state of the market report, you'll see that the average price actually went up still, which is like, how? It went up 1.3% in a month, which is still crazy from 445 to 451 in June. I'd be really interested to see what those numbers look like July. And I'll bring that to you as well, because if you track this for a, a six month average, you're telling me your house is going to be worth 6% more in six months when the average over the history of real estate is 4% a year. And so this is still crazy growth for as many price decreases. And this is really where you have the conversation of value versus price. So for example, let's say you have a house, your realtor did a CMA, a comparative market analysis, and you arrived that this house is worth $500,000, but the seller says, no, I'm not going to take $500,000. The market is crazy. I can get pretty much whatever I want within reason. Of course, you can't go list it for 5 million, but I'm going to list it for 560 because I think we can squeeze the last dollar out of this market and get top dollar for my property. The realtor obliges and the house goes on the market for 560. Two weeks pass, no offer. So they lower it to 540. Now that's a price decrease that's going to show up on the MLS and we're going to talk about it, right? And then it goes a month. 520 then it goes all the way down to 505 he gets an offer and closes for 490 and then we say okay the market is crashing but was it really crashing or was the strategy wrong and that is where i think a lot of these price decreases are coming from all of a sudden it's because sellers are still thinking in the mindset of a market that was six to 12 months ago not the market of today which is more competitive for them if you're a seller right now if you own a home in orlando the time you have left to get absolute top dollar for your property is dwindling fast you really have to start looking at it from a strategy based perspective you can't just pop your house up on a market anymore for whatever price you feel within reason and have 10 to 20 buyers come through on a weekend and have it sold within three days don't get me wrong you're still going to cash out considerably given how much homes have appreciated over the past two three years whether you want to upsize downsize move out of the country whatever Whatever the case may be but you're gonna have to be a bit more strategic a bit more intentional and the best marketing for a property is the right price and if you price it right it's gonna sell hands down no matter what in any market even in this market where you can still get average days on market around 20 days so you're thinking you're talking about three weeks but if you are a buyer it's your time it's your time the word multiple offers sounds so foreign to me now just kidding, but it's definitely nowhere near as common as it used to be six to seven months ago, which is absolutely amazing for you guys. The persons with the home to sell contingencies, you wanted the appraisal contingency in, I'm getting more of those in. Just incredible for my buyers, man. But let me know what you guys think. Are you bullish on the market? Are you bearish on the market? Are you in the market? Are you out of the market? Are you staying out of the market? Did you plan to go in the market? I don't think I've ever said market so many times, but let me know what your thoughts down below. And if by chance you are interested in jumping in the market, whether that's to buy a home or to sell one, I'd love to partner with you and just start that conversation as your real estate agent. So reach out to me. My email is going to be Romario G at salesorlandofl.com. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, let me know. Hit the like and hit the subscribe button. Follow me over on Instagram at Orlando with Mario. Come hang out. Ask me questions over there. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. But until then, stay safe.